Hi, today I'll be showing you an end-to-end -end demo of the Data Robot platform and how you can automate everything from data preparation to model building, testing, model deployment, monitoring, and governance, all while using integrations with AWS services, specifically in this case, AWS S3 and SageMaker. So let's dive right into it. We'll spend the next 10 minutes or so going through the process of preparing, building, and deploying a model from the Data Robot SaaS platform, which is also running in AWS, and explaining how Data Robot can help differentiate yourself in the market. So for today's demo, we're going to be using a data set from Lending Club. If you're not familiar with Lending Club, they are a peer-to-peer -peer lending portal where you can either apply for a loan or fund one. Today, we will be building a model that can predict whether a loan application runs the risk of being bad or defaulting, thus letting us decide which loans we want to invest in. So now we're actually going to pull in our data set from S3 and upload it to Data Robot. Specifically, we're going to pull this into the AI catalog, which is a document store that can be used as a collaboration tool for users to share data sets for model training. I do want to note that while we are using S3 in this demo, Data Robot is also able to pull data from other data sources within AWS, such as Redshift, Athena, and Aurora. So now that I selected my data set for training, Data Robot is going to pull the data into the platform and register it for use. This can take a couple of minutes to run, so we're actually going to switch over to a copy that I've already downloaded and create a project from that instead. So what's happening now is Data Robot is creating the project and it will shortly begin to do some quick exploratory data analysis on the data to help you understand what you're about to start modeling with. So some of the insights that Data Robot will surface in its profiling will revolve around things like data quality. So you can see if there are potentially any issues with the data that you're about to train a model on. Additionally, Data Robot is also able to derive some features automatically as well. So for example, as you can see here, we have uh, the earliest credit line feature and it's a date feature, and Data Robot has also automatically created extra features surrounding the day of the month, day of the week, month, and year. Additionally, once you enter in a target for your modeling, Data Robot is also able to automatically determine the type of modeling that we're about to do. So in this case, we're doing a binary classification type of problem, and will help select blueprints for training that will work on classification models. Finally, I also want to note that if your data set has time, any type, any type of uh, date time series component to it, Data Robot can automatically detect this and help provide settings for time series modeling. So things like clustering or really granular forecasting views ranging from hours up to years to help simplify the setup of a time series project. In this case, we're actually not going to use time series, so I'm going to turn that off and we're going to get to the modeling stage. So now that we're ready to begin modeling, I've just clicked the start button and this will kick off the autom automated modeling process. What this does is it unleashes an army of data science experts in the form of modeling workers that will begin training multiple models in parallel on the data. By doing so much of this parallel training, this allows you to free up time to explore other hypotheses that you otherwise would not really be able to look into due to lack of time or bandwidth. The process itself can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours to run, and it really depends on the size and complexity of your training data. So once the modeling process actually kicks off here, I'm going to switch over to an already completed project to show you what information is available for all trained models within Data Robot. The, it's currently on analyzing features, but it will shortly be on the last step, which is generating blueprints. And this is where Data Robot will determine from its vast array of available blueprints which ones are it should run and will be the best for the type of problem it's trying to solve. And now that that has kicked off, you can see in the right-hand side here, 
that we have eight models being prepared for training in parallel. So switching over to an already completed project using the same data set, what you see here are all the models that have been trained by Data Robot. Data Robot lists all the models in a stack rank format, with the most accurate model being displayed at the top of the list. For each model, you're able to drill down and see things like the steps that were taken to train the model. So you can see how it handled things like different train, you know, uh, different settings for categorical variables, numeric variables, text variables even. Additionally, if you want to understand which features in your training data affect the model the most, you can also see that here too. So for example, we see that for our model here, annual income, interest rate, and credit inquiries in the last six months are the most important factors in determining a prediction for whether our loan would be good or bad. Also, if you want to actually look at how well your model is performing on the training data set versus what the actual values were in that data set, you can go over to our left chart and take a look at the model performance here. Um, a really nice thing that is also available for all models in Data Robot is compliance documentation. So this is really great for industries that need to document how their models work and turns a process that can take anywhere from hours to weeks to even months into the click of a button. I also do want to note that everything that you've seen here can be done via our REST API. So if you're a data scientist who is more, more at home using programmatic functions to go through and do your model development and experimentation, you can easily do that with Data Robot. The final thing I want to note is basically now that we have the models, we need to actually get them in prediction or into production. And according to research, 90% of models never really make it into production. Sometimes it's just due to a difference in technology preferences between data science teams and IT teams. And to help with that, Data Robot allows you to easily deploy and monitor a model in a multitude of different locations. So you can do things like make a prediction directly from the UI, or you can deploy the model onto a data robot prediction server and then consume predictions via a REST API. Or as you're going to see, you can export the model as a Java jar file, which we'll call scoring code or code gen, and use it outside of data robot. In this case, specifically with SageMaker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to portal predictions tab, select scoring code, and then download and get our model ready for export and deployment into SageMaker. Now that we've downloaded our scoring code jar file from Data Robot in the UI here, it's time to upload it and host it within SageMaker. In order to host a model within AWS SageMaker, we're going to need three things. First, we're going to need a Docker image to host the model. Second, we're going to need an S3 bucket to upload our jar file to. And then third, we're going to need SageMaker itself. So let's see how we can put all these things together. The first thing is to ensure that you have a Docker image that is available from Docker Hub and provided by us, uploaded into an ECR registry for SageMaker to access. The second thing is to upload your jar file to S3. One thing to note is that SageMaker requires models to be in the form of a .tar.gz file format. So make sure that you compress your Java jar file before uploading it into S3. And then finally, it's time to go on to actually making a model in SageMaker. To do that, we'll go to Infer SageMaker, go down to Inference, click on Models, and then click on Create Model. Here, I will give this a name. And then I will then select an uh, IM role for SageMaker to use to execute. And then the two things you need to add in are your code image location and your model artifact location. For that, I'm going to stick in my repo location, and then I will go back to S3 and grab the URI for my model file and upload that here. After that, everything else can be left as it is and hit create model. And now we have a model ready for use within SageMaker. 
our SageMaker model created, it's time to start making predictions against it. To do that, we're going to look at both how to make predictions via batch transform jobs and via endpoints for real-time predictions. To do a batch transform job, all you can just need to do is click on the model, click on create batch transform job, and then fill in a couple of uh, pieces of information here. So we're going to give it a name, ensure our demo is set, our model name is set correctly, give it an instance type, an account, and then we're going to define our input and output locations. These will be S3 folders that will be used to read in any files within the folder and then used to write the contents of the predictions back to a different location. So in this case, I have in the same S3 bucket, a prediction input and prediction output folder. From there, you just leave everything else blank and hit create job. This will take a few minutes to run so we can look at a previously ran batch prediction job and see what we get at in our S3 bucket. So we just go to the job, look for our output data configuration, click on the S3 location, and we see that we get an output file that contains all the scores for all the rows that we predicted from our input CSV file. Now let's look at how we can do real-time scoring through endpoints within SageMaker. To do that, let's go back to SageMaker and click on endpoints. From here, we'll click create endpoint, give our endpoint a name, select create new endpoint configuration to tell it which model to use, and also give this a name. Everything else can be left blank. We just need to go down to production variants, click add model, hit create endpoint configuration, and then we can save this endpoint. From here, and this will take maybe a minute or two to create, but this will provide us with an API endpoint that we can hit to do real-time predictions against. In the interest of time, I'm actually going to show you a previously created endpoint and show you what how this would look. So this can run from any REST API call, but for right now, we're going to do this within a CLI terminal and use the AWS CLI. So here I have my AWS SageMaker runtime call to my endpoint and to a CSV file called Lending Club Scoring that just has a single row of data to predict against. And then I am going to output it to an output.csv file. So I just run this. It makes the API call to that endpoint. And then if we look at the output of our CSV file, we have the single row of predictions that were made from our input. And this, again, you can use in either a REST API call somewhere else, or you can run it from the command line and get real-time predictions this way.